our folks straight from the glamour city of the world, the Babbitt sisters in another part of Hollywood. <laughs> Several days ago, we met the Babbitt sisters, Martha and Abby, two lovable old maids who have lived all their lives in Hollywood. Well, they remember when Hollywood was once an orange grove and renowned Hollywood Boulevard only a cow trail. However, all about them, the scene has changed. New faces, new streets, new houses, new ideas, and Hollywood has become famous. But in the spacious grounds of the old-fashioned house on Wilton Avenue, nothing is different. The fig trees continue to bear, the avocado tree grows larger each year, the house gets its yearly renovating as it did when California was just learning about tourists. And the routine of the Babbitt sisters never varies, just as the lives and the routine of hundreds of other people like the Babbitts who live in Hollywood never change. Well, the last we heard from the Babbitt sisters, a real estate man had approached them with an offer to buy their property for a motion picture company. With such a turn of events in their lives and with such a strong feeling against the motion picture industry, the sisters begin fighting the efforts of the super-colossal film company to build a studio on their street. And their bitterness against the movie people increases tenfold. During the space of time between the first episode and the one you are about to hear, many of the characters in the story have been introduced, including Tommy Carlton, the boy who lives next door. The sisters have also just received a telegram announcing the arrival of their young niece from Connecticut. <laughs> well, they're not looking forward to her visit with any great pleasure, for they believe Hollywood is no place for young girls. Now it's very early in the morning. And they're in the kitchen, just finishing their breakfast. At any moment, their colored laundress, Lily, is expected to arrive. You'd better hurry, Abby. You sit there and dawdle over your coffee like you had all day. You haven't got your dress on yet. Well, I, I can't drink my coffee in anything but my wrapper. And you know it. I've been doing it for 20 years. My, this coffee's hot. Yes, and you make so much noise with it. But do you have to drink your second cup of coffee this morning? Bitter. I told you we should have gotten up at 5 o'clock this morning instead of 5.30. Well, Lily ain't here yet. It told her to be here sharp at 7. My, Martha, we've got two whole hours until train time. We haven't got two hours. we got only an hour to get to Glendale. Come on, Abby. Oh, you worry me to death. You're so dilly-dally sometimes. Well, look at the clock. It's seven. Oh, there's Lily now, coming through the back gate. She's certainly taking her time. She's getting old. Hurry along, Lily. Yes, ma'am. We got a lot for you to do while we're going down to the train, Lily. Yes, ma'am. But I got the misery in my back this morning. Oh, you always got misery in your back. You had the misery ever since I've known you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Abby. Come along now, Lily. Oh, good morning, Lily. Now, Lily, just let the kitchen go until last. Come with me upstairs, and I'll show you what I want you to do in the spare bedroom. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the matter, Miss Abby? You look kind of peaky this morning. Oh, she's all right, Lily. Well, uh, we was up pretty late last night, uh, petitioning. Petitioning? Lily? Uh, did you ever get up a petition, uh, Lily? Is that some kind of a game? Well, no, not exactly. It's where you put a lot of names on paper to see if you can keep somebody from doing something. No, ma'am, I don't reckon it's how I has. But I has played tit-tat, too. Well, it's more serious than that, Lily. Lily, come on. You're going to make us miss the train. Yes, ma'am, I's a coming. Oh, lordy, lordy. Now, Lily, the first thing we want you to do is to get all this stuff out of the spare bedroom. Yes, we sort of shoved everything in here when we cleaned out the rest of the rooms the other week. Then, after you get this stuff out of the way, why, oh, I want to... what do you all to... want me to do, Miss Morford? Just heave it out the window? Oh, of course not. Oh, I'm so nervous this morning, thinking of getting to the train on time and all. Why, uh, let's see, put it back in the hall closet. Yes, ma'am. Then take those curtains down and put up the new ones that we got yesterday. Yes, oh, yes, better press them before you put them up. Is your iron a-working? Why, of course. 
course it always works. Well, it didn't the last time I was here. Fiddlesticks, of course it works. Uh, Lily's right, Martha. Well, can't you go see if it works while I show Lily the rest of the things she's got to do, Mom? Well, I've got my dress to put on. you got plenty of time to do that. And I've got my hair to take down. Well, you'll still have time to see about the iron after you fix your hair. If you just hadn't dawdled over that second cup of coffee. Oh, that's right. I get blamed for everything. Whenever you get in a hurry to do something, I... I told you last week we, we ought to have done this room first. I had a funny feeling. Oh, you're always getting funny feelings. Oh. Now, Lily, I want... Oh. Abby, will you please stop crying? You know you always break me up when you do that. <laughs> now, now, Lily, when, when you get the curtains up, take the rugs down in the garden. Put them on the back lawn. Tommy cut it yesterday. Oh, that reminds me. Where is Tommy? He ought to be coming along any minute now. Oh, uh, Tommy's not supposed to be here until eight. Oh, Martha, you make my spine shiver all over. You're always in such hurry. Well, I've got so many things in my mind, I'm almost crazy. Yes, Lily, we're almost always crazy. Just pixelated. Well, I'm that way, too. Because Martha gets so worked up over things. Well, I wish you would once in a while. Well, somebody's got to have the equilibrium around here. What, with a moving picture people trying to build right on top of us, and a petition that's only half full, and a silly sister who thinks it's smart to send her child clear out to Hollywood on a pleasure trip. It's a wonder we aren't in the asylum. Or... Oh, there's Tommy now. Hurry along, Abby. Don't stand there. Oh. You're not half dressed. All right. Oh, I told you not to drink that second cup of coffee. Miss Martha, what else y'all want me to do? I got the curtains up and the rugs cleaned and the trash in the closet. You have no such thing. Uh, yes, ma'am, I have. But but I'm like Miss Abby. You give my spine the shivers, too. You just naturally get so mixed up like. Yes, 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 yes. Well, don't talk so much. Now, be sure and get... Abby, stick your head out of the window and see if that's really Tommy. Oh, my, no, Martha. My hair ain't combed yet. I never saw the beat fiddle. I might as well do it myself. Uh, Miss Martha, you just run along now and get your hat, and, and I'll haul out the window to Mr. Tommy. And don't you mind about these here rooms. I've been a-cleaning for y'all for 30 years. I knows what to do. Oh, yes, that's right, Lily. Well, don't holler too loud. I don't like it. It sounds so common. I'm ready, Martha. That is, I think I'm ready. Where's my hat? Have you got well, my hat, Abby? Well, of course I ain't. Well, what would I have your hat for? Well, you go along and get in the car. I'll be right down. Yes, I know you will. Oh, um... We're coming, Tommy. Well, we've got plenty of time. I'm early. Well, I guess I got everything but my senses this morning. Uh, oh, good morning, Tommy. Kind of foggy. You'd better drive kind of slow. I will, Miss Martha. That's the reason I'm a little early. Well, crawl in, Abby. Oh, dear, I forgot my... No, oh. what's the matter? Oh, I forgot my rabbit's foot. Oh, I never get in an automobile without it. Nonsense. <coughs> Nothing but sheer nonsense. Well, I don't know. Remember that time on the state picnic, or was it the Hollywood Old Settlers? Well, anyway... Well, what difference does it make? That's beside the point, Abby. Yeah. Oh, here comes the train down the track now. Hurry, Tommy, get the door open. Oh, fiddle, if we've missed getting here on time. Oh, oh we're here, all right. Abby, shut up. You're hysterical. <laughs> you've got plenty of time. There you are. Yeah. Careful with that step and don't crack your head on the edge. Wouldn't make much difference if I did. No, it wouldn't. It's cracked anyway. Abby. Oh, why, I mean the door frame, of course, Martha. Oh, my spine's beginning to shiver. Oh, there's the train. Yes, trains always did make me nervous. Come, Abby. Now, let's run. Oh, I can't run. I never ran for anything in my life. We've got plenty of time. Oh, Fiddler, how can you say such a thing when the train is stopping, Tommy? Now, Abby, you look this way, uh -huh. and I look down that way. And don't get separated. Oh, no, we mustn't separate, because she'll probably know us quicker if we're standing here together. What does she look like? Oh, she's pretty. Yes, she's pretty. Abby, will you please stop looking my way? Keep your eyes up at that end. Oh, but most of the people are getting off right there by you. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. Oh, dear child. Oh, there she is. Oh, oh you perfect dears. Getting down here so early to meet me. Oh, it's all right. We're so glad to see you. Oh, yes, we're just <laughs> awfully glad to see you, Tabitha. Well, uh... Don't forget me. Oh, of course. This is Tommy Carlton, the boy who lives next door. Yes, he cuts our grass now. Oh, oh nice. Oh, I'm so tired. It's such a long way to Hollywood, but I'm finally here. Yes, it is. Oh, it's good to be here. 
I worked so hard to earn this trip, this chance. Well, we just hope you're going to like your vacation real well, and we'll do everything we can to give you a good time. Oh, but Aunt Martha, this isn't a vacation. I'm going to stay. Oh, my, Martha, she's going to stay. Oh, but you can't. Oh, yes, but I can't. I'm going into the movies. Oh, uh, the oh why? You wouldn't dare. Oh, you see, oh. I won a photographer's contest for the prettiest school teacher at home, and I have a contract. Oh, contract? Uh-huh. Oh. With the super colossal film corporation of Hollywood. Oh! oh. Quick, Tommy! Oh. Catch Abby! She's fainted. Well, as Martha might say, isn't this a pretty kettle of fish? (laughs) Or is it? Well, it probably is, as far as the Babbitt sisters are concerned. With the super-colossal film studios trying to buy them out, and with the same company already owning the acting rights of their niece, what is going to happen? It is intended that this series shall depict as much reality as possible, using actual names of places of interest, restaurants, names of celebrities, and streets, with only the characters in the main part of the story fictional. So that visitors who have been to Hollywood, whether they came from Oshkosh or New York, will recognize the names and places. One can just imagine Mrs. Jones telling Ezra Smith, Oh, I saw that place. Or, uh, we went there on our trip to Hollywood. Later, the sisters will attend actual premieres, and in the course of the story, they will visit picture stars' homes. As the story progresses, the sisters are naturally won over to the stability and genuine friendliness of the people in the movie colony. And with the progress of the series, the Babbitt sisters will undergo a complete change in their ideas of Hollywood. The part of Martha was played by Martha Wentworth and that of Abby by Noreen Gamill. The story of the Babbitt sisters was conceived by Miss Wentworth and Miss Gamill and was registered under number 12653 at the Screenwriters Guild, December 6th, 1937. The script was written by Miss Gamill. This is David Jordan speaking, and this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>